The main goal is maximizing the water harvesting on the whole property entirely. And it starts with our driveway path up to the build site. What's going on everyone? I'm Brandon and we're here with Nika and this is the Greening the Desert Project. All right, so we're back here on the property and we are working our way up the hill. And this was probably where things got a whole lot more tricky for us. And it was more just the planning that was needed as well as just keeping in mind, you know, the permaculture practices that we're trying to do with rehydrating the land and capturing and soaking more water. So the way that the driveway has ultimately led up to um, all the way up to the top, but the way that it's been created, it's made its own little snake pattern throughout the hill here so that we've created multiple stopping points for water to be stopped, slowed, and soaked into the ground. So I see all these rocks and kind of piles scattered around. Was that kind of the first thing you had to do to build this portion of the driveway was move all the rocks? Yeah, there was uh, the lifetime worth of rocks, as our friend had told us. Um, so big portion of this project and the probably the most time consuming, at least part of the driveway was literally yeah, moving and picking out all of these rocks everywhere. So, and actually we're kind of finding even that as we continuously drive and walk the path, you know, multiple times in a day, probably, you know, we're discovering all these more rocks that keep popping up. So it's just the abundance and, you know, every time you walk, there's more rocks. So everything you even see on the driveway itself, you know, this whole path, any of the rocks that you see visible, these are ones that are already have been uncovered by driving and walking. So we had already moved so many different rocks and we've got our piles laid out. And the way actually we have the piles of rocks laid out, we have tried to lay and stack the rocks in a way that is slowing and capturing more water as well. Even though things aren't 100% complete and we still need to, you know, get a way better outline and kind of final plan for how this whole path is going to uh, line out. But at least for now, just the pace that we were going, we just worked slowly, but at least, you know, what we were moving and uh, kind of getting out of the way for the, the pathway, we wanted to at least create it in a way so it's at least serving a function in slowing and stopping more water, providing more sediment catchment as well too. And then ultimately it gives us way better perspective and observation points to look at later as we continuously walk up to the build site or ride the ATV up we're able to observe a whole lot more the interaction with the water and that gives us the capacity to make the improvements, you know, in the future here. And so like, as we come up, I think I see a stump there in the road. Does that mean there were a few trees that you needed to cut down and you know, how many more trees are you planning on kind of taking down? Well, luckily uh, these are probably the only, I think in total, we're maybe gonna cut down four trees throughout this whole pathway, which I think, you know, from the beginning, it's almost a mile um, at least. But, you know, we, our goal isn't to, you know, devastate the ecosystem that's already established here. And where we're going up the hill, it gets a lot more dense with trees and vegetation. But, you know, we just want to, you know, for making a pathway, you know, we're wanting to do minimal destruction uh, to the ecosystem in the forest that's already here. So we've only had to cut these two trees along the pathway and picking a whole lot of rocks as well along the way. Um, but that also now we'll be able to get a better idea of how to divert the water to the already established trees around and be able to slow more and capture more essentially. Definitely makes sense not wanting to, you know, cause too much, you know, change to the environment that is here with the trees because as we walked at the beginning of the property and the driveway, I definitely noticed that under the trees there seemed to be kind of a lot going on. It kind of seemed around the trees and kind of under them, you know, there are bushes and lots of grass. So they're, they're really serving a purpose here on the property and that's kind of another reason to keep them around. 
Yeah, we can kind of observe just the interaction that the trees have with the landscape itself because a lot of these trees are aiding in slowing down water and soaking more water. And I think that's we can see the evidence of the different shrubs and bushes that do grow around. And not to mention, you know, any tree is going to be contributing fungi because of, you know, just the fact that it's a tree and the root system that it has. So it's attracting more fungi and fungal activity. And so it's more that it's contributing to the full cycle of a healthy ecosystem. And not to mention for how hot and dry it gets here, this is the kind of fungi we do want to work with, especially because it's already adapted, you know, compared to other fungi or mycelium. You know, any fungus that requires a bit more moisture, you know, we, we want to work with the natural ecosystem, the natural biology, and, you know, team up with it, but create more diversity than what's already here, too. And I can definitely tell looking under all these trees, they're kind of one of the only things that are creating a biomass. You know, they seem to drop all their pine needles and all their bits, and it creates kind of a fat bit under there. So it definitely makes sense when it comes to, they do a lot of contributing that way. Yeah, they're probably the bigger, or the biggest contributors of carbon or biomass in this whole ecosystem because the grass we have here is very thin, very small blade, and we also have little bunches. And then there's also the different weeds and uh, the flowers that will grow. So we still have yet to have a full year you know, here to observe whatever, what all the things that grow. So it's a, it's a continuous observation and into springtime throughout summer, we'll get to see more of what is growing and the things that we'll probably want to uh, help propagate a lot more on the property too. So walking up earlier, we saw that there were rolling dips in the beginning portions of some of the kind of drive. Is there plans to do those same kind of earthworks on this portion of the road that's coming up the hill? Yeah, we still have a whole lot of planning that we need to do. And it was only because there were so many rocks to pick, you know, it was just at least making some of the uh, rock stacking just efficient and water capture but we do have plans to do more rolling dips along this whole pathway so we are going to essentially be trying to zigzag the water and slow it down and keep it on the property itself as long as possible and keep things from washing out but increase the absorption of moisture and the capacity in the soil so essentially this portion of the road is going to be like a big water diverting structure yeah, the whole, this whole driveway, I mean, the angle that the driveway is even at on this hill, it's cutting across the whole horizontal angle, you know, at a slight downgrade, but horizontally it's cutting across the whole hill. So we're essentially able to capture and slow all the water along our whole hillside on our property here and basically creating these earthworks. We're just going to maximize all the water capturing and, and holding capacity, but we're gonna more cut off the water from just washing down like it has for decades, essentially, from all the monsoon rains. All right, so we're coming up to the biggest probably challenge that we had in this driveway pathway, and it was building this ramp, essentially, to cut up the hill. And we had kind of a big challenge, um, which kind of turned into more of a blessing uh, essentially you know and just getting creative and working with nature and the surroundings so we had a lot of these big boulders and rocks and it just really didn't make sense to take the time and energy with the tractor to even try to dig any of these out so we actually utilized a lot of the rocks that we picked along our pathway and used that to basically build up the, the ramp here and then we took a lot of the gravelly sand material as well down from the bottom from digging out the water infiltration basins that we did so we used all that material to help fill in and create our pathway so that we could actually finally get the tractor and the ATV and hopefully in the future vehicles up this hill. So essentially it's like a whole fat layer of rocks underneath all of this dirt you see here? 
Yeah, we used a lot of huge, big boulders, you know, to start with for a base and then just slowly built every, you know, rock stacking to the max, basically. But it is kind of nice at the same time because this whole hillside is rock. So it's in that respect, kind of aiding in keeping the road from degrading or, you know, really sinking in or settling in a lot. You know, I think it's like the rock, we utilize the rocks to help hold in the rock stacking that we did do for building this driveway ramp up. But then that's also a plus because there's this rock hill that is essentially kind of preventing a lot of erosion at the same time. So it's just the, <laughs> the big, you know, overall picture of the driveway. It's just a huge, big stone monument almost. <laughs> and I bet all those rocks are quite nice for the road because the water can infiltrate and seep down and through pretty easily. So it's not like going to be too mucky for long. No, it won't be too mucky at all. I mean, you can kind of see we've driven this a whole lot and, you know, it's pretty well compacted down and it's pretty smoothed out, but it's not rutted out or anything like that. And I've driven up here and walked on here, you know, when it was mucky and rainy. So that's kind of a good thing with how we did the rocks. And I guess that's just the added bonus too with the hillside as well, because it'll do the same thing. So we're looking down the driveway and the one thing I needed to point out as well is that the way that we've kind of planned out this pathway, you know, we're intending for all of these earthworks and these water slowing and stopping uh, practices, you know, everything is meant to be interconnected. So that's where also even the driveway ramp, it'll be slowing water, but we'll also be diverting it in a way that will ultimately, uh, ultimately be leading to all of our other earthworks that we have planned out. So that's kind of a big thing with why we don't have everything done or not everything is sketched out because we still have planning to do for how everything's gonna interconnect and further slow and stop and soak water. And essentially also because you have to see how the earthworks you've created kind of how they work and how well they can handle things because you don't want to like build way too much and then have it not work the way you want it to. Yeah, a lot of this is still, you know, technically experimental because, you know, hy hypothetically, you know, all of these are slowing and stopping water, but it's really only until we get the monsoonal rains or we get the sheet flow of water that we'll really be able to get an idea of, you know, how the earthworks that we have done, how those are working and the corrections we need to make. And then also the driveway and just kind of the overall property itself, looking at how the water is interacting with the landscape. So I'm kind of off to the side of the road, but we can definitely see that you had to build up quite a bit in order to build up this part of the ramp. Like how much more do you kind of have to build up on this portion of the road because I do still see some of the boulders kind of poking out. Is there plans to kind of keep keep going and building this up? Yeah, that's part of, uh, you know, the way that we interconnected with the hillside and kind of worked with the bigger boulders in building this up. So with where a lot of the boulders are sticking up, that's essentially the height that we do need to bring our gravel and a, a bit more. So you can kind of see how much we've already built up with the rocks and we just need to build up just a little bit more. But that's why, you know, it, it was part of just the journey of getting to the build site and getting at least the tractor and the ATV able to, you know, get to the site itself. So nothing is 100%. It's kind of just at a, you know, adequate point for <laughs> transitioning up and down the hill basically. So it's been pretty awesome with the whole driveway path experience, you know, besides the, the labor and the work that was involved, I mean, the way that the shape of the landscape and the shape of the hill, it really worked a whole lot in our favor, especially for how we tried to make this a more regenerative driveway path with the earthworks and just the way that we're gonna be incorporating all of the things and uh, earthworks that are gonna be slowing and stopping and soaking the water. So, but as we get, you know, to the top here, you know, we actually really find just the abundance of rocks. And that was, you know, kind of 
part of the challenge with being up here at the top was working with the surroundings and kind of working with the you know nature that's already taken hold here and you know for efficiency sake even you know it's like we can't pull a whole lot of these rocks you know for how big they are and for how small the tractor that we do have but you know that was the alternative was being creative and just working with nature in working with a lot of the different forms uh the formations and the way that the rocks are staggered but we come around this corner which is nice because it makes a really nice clear path and really the only thing that was stopping us was the rocks and how to work with them and incorporating a lot of these different diversion di uh, diversion ditches um, the water basins and the rolling dips and such so since up here seems to be just ridiculously abundant in rocks uh, how did that change the way that you decided to make the next earthworks and formations well, fundamentally, the earthworks that we'll be doing are all similar in concept, but the only difference is the material that, we'll, that we were using. Um, so when we're up here, since we have the rocks, we're essentially making, or we have made all of these outlines for where we're going to do rolling dips. So we can kind of call them uh, rock dips and rock swales and such for the most part, rock basins too. Um, so that was like part of it, you know, there's just all of these rocks everywhere. So why not utilize them? And especially because we're trying to, you know, hold and soak as much water. The rocks are, you know, not going to erode away like a regular swale or a regular basin with, you know, just the soil or the dirt. So the rocks are going to help create the stability. But it's just like the driveway ramp, too, that these rocks are going to help uh, create infiltration and create less of a muddy mess along our pathway, but it's going to create, you know, more soakage and just more water penetration. And it also makes you, in the sense, much more sustainable that way. You're not needing outside sources for material for many of the things you're creating. No, not at all. I mean, it really cuts a whole lot of cost down, you know, for one. And I mean, quite frankly, the only thing that we've really had to pay for, you know, along this whole driveway path is the gas. And that, I mean, gas isn't too expensive and we at least can get a whole lot done with the tractor. And so when we're just looking at, you know, the earthworks, you know, and creating a driveway path, we already had, you know, everyone uses gravel and everyone's using, you know, rocks and such and culverts. But, you know, we're mitigating a lot of the water instead of culverts. We're using a lot of rolling dips to direct the water where we want it to go. But that's also just part of the abundance of the material we have up here because we have all the rocks, but we also have all of the gravel as well. So it's just, you know, logical thinking, you know, why spend the gas money there and back, you know, or, you know, having stuff trucked in when we already have the materials. And all it really do does require is just a little bit of movement. So then this here is kind of the first so-called rock dip. Yeah, this is a, a little bit of an exaggerated uh, rock rolling dip kind of deal. But initially, we wanted to just at least outline everything along the way that we knew we are going to need, you know, as far as earthworks. And it's also just working with the surroundings. Like I said, we've got all of these huge boulders that stick up. So there's a lot of these different spots where there was two different big boulders on either side. And so with working with the nature, you know, it just makes sense like, oh, let's just put a rock dip right here. So, you know, where there's two boulders, then we just stacked more further rocks and then created our own little diversion rolling dip to further at least slow water and divert it slightly because the rocks still, you know, water can still penetrate and, and wash through, but that's where it's going to come down to observation during monsoon rains even to get a glimpse of how everything's interacting. So it's going to be quite a treat just to see, you know, <laughs> what improvements actually that we do need to make. So as silly as that sounds to think about, you know, that we're going to be looking forward to the corrections. <laughs> So it seems like with a lot of these earthworks, observation is really the most important part. And not only while you're building it, 
but it's observing how they react because if you don't do that essentially they're just they may not work kind of well we don't want to go just full fledged at stuff and just think that it's going to work because we could put in a whole lot of work and then there could be just a whole bunch of major corrections that we need to make. And if we're finalizing a lot of these things too, and thinking that they're done and over with, then there's also, I mean, there's just the chance that when the rains do come, there could be major washouts and things might not work as, you know, they were intended. And so in that respect, it's just going to create more work and more of a headache and kind of, you know, just like that disappointment and almost thinking like, oh, none of this stuff works. So, but that's just a part of observing as slow and, you know, maybe boring as people kind of think it is. I, I mean, it's the most crucial aspect in, you know, rejuvenating or restoring or even your own, like, you know, garden space or homestead space. And it definitely seems like through being very observant and kind of that slow buildup, it really is going to just save time and energy in the long run because like you said if you do a bunch of work and a bunch of that work gets washed out say during a monsoon you know that's a whole bunch more work you have to do when you know it's it's work you wouldn't have had to do and i think that's a very important point that i can appreciate well we're only two people so we can only do so much and get so many things done but that's just kind of where we tried to plan things as efficiently as possible and kind of, you know, just keeping on our timeline of just moving forward and coming back to things, but outlining things at the same time. So it's kind of realistically for us, we can't get everything finalized. So we almost have no choice but to take our time and, you know, watch and observe everything, how it interacts and slowly make these improvements, you know, just the way nature does. You know, nature is a slow succession of, you know, buildup of, of the ecosystem. And so we're just mimicking that in, you know, a diverse of different ways, basically a diversity of different ways. So we just kind of came around a corner and there's kind of this, what looks like a sort of earthwork. What, what happened here? Well, this is not an earthwork, although it kind of has turned into an earthwork now, technically. Um, but this was the first build site. So this was the old build site. And you can look back on our previous videos at, you know, a little bit, we had to stop because we had problems with just the placement, there was just wrong measurements that were going on. So we effectively had to restart the whole project. You know, we we worked our way up to this point and we had actually started doing a whole lot of digging and, you know, really planning out the Gabion Wallapini. But that's where, you know, a lot of discussion was had and then um, measurements and such were taken and it was you know, the decision was made that we needed to move over a whole lot more. Even though we, seems like we did all this work for nothing, you know, it almost, we've actually done work in the sense of more earthwork. So because we've kind of dug out this whole area a little bit, and now we've got this huge berm, we are effectively now holding and penetrating more water. And this is a huge area. So this could be a huge infiltration basin essentially. So it'll be exciting to see how much this thing fills up during monsoon rain. And I figure even though all this work was done, there was probably a lot of rocks you were able to utilize from this area for other areas. Oh, no doubt. Yeah, there's a, a whole bunch of rocks even still here. And even though uh, it doesn't look like we've moved any, we actually have utilized a whole lot of the rocks that we dug up over here, not only for the driveway path, but also for the Gabion Wallapini. So having to move from this build site to another build site, like was that kind of like a, a hard thing for you to have to do? Were you kind of prepared maybe for that aspect being as it is so rocky? It was definitely kind of a very, you know, big letdown almost. And um, I mean, it was really honestly just user error. So it was my own fault, you know, but for my attitude at least, you know, I wasn't discouraged. A lot of this has been planned out, but also has been planned with backup plans as well. So, 
where we were in in this part of the build actually wasn't even like a big deal i mean granted we had done a lot of work and a lot of digging but we hadn't even really got started we hadn't started putting the baskets together we hadn't really gotten the head start like we did on the other build site so that's kind of what it turned into is that even though we had to move from this site moving to the the second site and starting from there it turned out that it was a whole better option it was easier to dig and there was just a whole lot of benefits to the move so it was a little discouraging at first but i think you know after finding the second spot to you know restart it definitely you know everything started looking up a special shout out to our green guardian members with their help we are going to be able to speed up the process of regreening this desert so I'd appreciate if everyone took a look at our Green Guardians membership page just to see what we're offering because we're trying to impart valuable information that can translate to your own property or homestead. So since you had to move build sites, I figure you then had to extend your driveway path. So kind of, was it the same process of just kind of finding the contours and kind of where things were going to go or did you just kind of go where the road let you go? It was a little bit more so kind of letting the surroundings kind of guide where the driveway path was going to lead. You know, at first it was choosing the second build spot and then it was the afterthought kind of of where the path would lead. Um, and I guess in my mind, that's, it might seem backwards to most people, but that's how I thought was more logical to think about. And that's just how I think about what the earthworks and such in general. It's like, you do want to plant the water, but I think, you know, where you're going to have structures, greenhouses, a homestead or anything like that. I think that's kind of the more important thing, you know, because you're going to be stepping out of that doorway of, you know, that structure and looking out. And so it shouldn't mat you know things where earthworks are and other th pathways shouldn't discourage that kind of choice so for me it's more choosing the location of something and then finding the path to it so but it worked out in our favor at least for you know the rest of the pathway because we have enough spacing between a lot of the trees and even if we have to maybe cut one or two you know all we're going to be doing is helping thin out all of the you know the monoculture that's going on here but for the most part all of this was guided you know with um watching out for big boulders and rocks so it's like i said letting nature kind of give us the indication of the pathway where to go you know of least resistance as well so this portion of the road that we've walked kind of seems pretty bare like there's not a lot of earthworks on it or do you have plans to line it with rocks as well as gravel yeah, there's a lot of different points around here that are similar to the uh, beginning of the driveway, just with the different sizes of rocks and boulders. So there's plenty of rocks that we can utilize, but it's also like still observing and making little adjustments here and there. So not everything's been completely planned out. You know, this is more recent, you know, because we chose the second build site and then I kind of made the pathway to the build site. So it's not necessarily on priority right now because we at least at the minimum have a pathway and it'll just be slow little steps at a time of doing little earthworks as we kind of come up and down. And then it'll just be a whole lot better too once we're actually camping up top here and we're not having to walk up and down the hill and bring all of our stuff. You know, once we get all of our stuff up here, then it'll be less need to, you know, move back and forth. So off to the side of kind of the pathway here, I see kind of some little dugout areas. Are those more infiltration basins? Those are infiltration basins. And that's kind of where things are leading. You know, the path leads to the build site, but with the build in general, because we've been utilizing all of the natural materials in the area with the rocks and the soil and the sand, you know, that's where we've actually moved, started moving outwardly to gather a lot of these materials, but also doing the earthworks at the same time. So we at least have an outer radius right now of earthworks that we have done. 
and it's kind of the layout of the land and the way that the level contour lines of the land work that we've ultimately chosen to do a lot more basins on the north side of the property and especially because we have a whole lot more trees and that we don't want to cut down and then our south side has a lot more sand and open space so we'll be doing more swales along that uh, edge of the property but that's kind of our way where we're working at the build site and because the way that we're building the structure you know that's causing us to start actually working outwardly so that's a little bit of the reason why we haven't done so much with the driveway path and anything you know farther down the hill because we at least wanted to make our way to where the build site will be where the gabion wallapini will be but then that way working from there we're working inwardly and then working outwardly so that's kind of the ultimate goal is that we'll start rippling out with the earthworks that we do and that just goes with careful planning you know because we're trying to plan our permaculture garden our permaculture food forest you know we're trying to redesign this whole landscape just so that we can hold and capture more water because especially now that we're at the top of the hill you know this is the highest point among the the area basically and going down even to our neighbors properties so we sit at a high point so it's really important actually the earthworks that we do you know kind of create up top here because if we're creating more water infiltration up here capturing more water then essentially over time that will help drain down the way gravity will pull it down to the lower parts of the properties so we could end up with springs you know in maybe 10 15 years something like that if we start capturing you know the more water we capture and hold that's just the more that we're going to help soak the landscape and so i i kind of deem the top of the hill as pretty important because coming from the top and working our way down will be just how we integrate everything into being one huge gigantic you know interlocking interworking project of uh, rainwater capture <laughs> And so it definitely sounds like with the build and everything, you're kind of almost following the path of the water as you build things and kind of dealing with the water as it goes down the hill in that way. You know, you catch it up here, you slow it down lower, and eventually it ends up into the wash. Yeah, it's kind of uh, just thinking almost like water, essentially. So we are following where the water is going and that's just all you know what we have to work with right now we have all of these different water veins we can see evidence of where things are are kind of running so until we actually get monsoonal rains that will be you know the time to really be paying attention and observing actually because that will give us way better ideas of okay we do need to have a basin here or we need to ha definitely have a swale here or we need to have a holding uh, catchment area here so there's a lot of observation to do and like I said we're only two people so everything will be slow and in succession and slowly build up you know as things soak more water as we start cultivating more biology as we start kind of cultivating more of the landscape in general so we're up at the top now and we see this like structure here is this the second build site or is this an earthwork it's actually both. 